With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Members of the Senate Mining and Forestry Policy Committee considered a bill that would establish a two-year waiting period before environmental permits could be terminated if the state were to terminate the mineral lease associated with iron mining. Here are some highlights. Senate File 2112 provides that if the DNR terminates state mineral leases associated with a mine permit for an operation to mine to provide direct reduced uh, Re, 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 provide direct reduction of ore and to make steel in 2021, the DNR and the MPCA must wait two years before moving to terminate the environmental permits associated with the mineral leases unless needed to ensure environmental protection to comply with federal law. A permittee may retain the right to propose to amend, transfer, or cancel the permits under existing law, and the bill clarifies that it does not impact the state's ability to cancel mineral leases. Um, members, this is a little bit of an insurance policy, I'd like to call it. And just to give you a little bit of history on the, the site that we're talking about, the site we're talking about was occupied by a taconite plant by the name of Butler Taconite up until 1985. And in 1985, the Hannah Mining Company decided to close Butler Taconite permanently. And Butler Taconite was a surprise closure to many people because it was the lowest cost uh, taconite plant on the iron range and it also had the best ore and we think that there's anywhere from 100 to 200 years of ore still in the ground at the site where butler taconite was well um, since that time the state has permitted the site for not only a mining operation but a pellet operation a direct reduced a production operation and a mini mill, a steel mill. So you could go from mining the ore on the Butler Taconite site to actually producing steel. And uh, it's been a dream of ours for many, many years to be able to do this. Well, through all the fits and starts of all the different things that have happened on that site. And um, in 2008, it was actually permitted to SR Steel to do exactly what I just got done saying. Um, the economy, uh, lack of financing, offtake agreements that maybe were there, but then were not honored or not or fell through. Uh, eventually, we ran into bankruptcies, uh, fits and starts, withdrawing of the of the mineral leases, uh, another bankruptcy, and another attempt to start it up again. And now we're at a position position where. Masabi Metallics, and you have a letter in your packet from Masabi Metallics. Masabi Metallics is attempting to prove that they can do do the do the uh, the project based on some covenants set forth by the DNR. So, on on May first, uh, there has to be some uh, uh, proof that Masabi Metallics not only has an offtake agreement but has the financing necessary to do the project, and we don't know what's going to happen. So even if on May 1st, everything is in place for the DNR to accept Masabi Metallic's uh, ability to, to do this project, anything could happen in the very near future. Um, we, we could have a downturn in the economy. The steel industry could be uh, uh, besieged by um, offshore dumping of steel. Uh, and there could be a, a, some type of a recession that stops the project from happening. So. What this basically does is it just says that in the event that the DNR decides to terminate mineral leases because of the fact that the project was not completed as it, as was agreed to, then the permits will still stay valid. Masabi is committed to building a world-class iron ore operation in Nashwalk and has been actively advancing critical milestones over the past several months with the goal to commence the next phase of construction activities in the second quarter of 2021. Once the financing is secured, Masabi anticipates a 36 month construction time and a ramp up schedule to complete a 7 million tons per year iron ore to pelletization, excuse me, project. Um, right now, uh, the global iron markets are strong and Masabi anticipates North American, European and other markets to grow this year as economies recover from the pandemic. We're also excited to be an important part of an expected increase for 
increased demand for U.S. steel production as a result of President Biden's announced plans for major infrastructure investments in transportation and green energy, which we think will result in a greater call for local steel. And so the timing is good to ramp up construction activities to access these improving markets. This particular permit, would it, this bill is seeking to extend how long it would go because otherwise it wouldn't be good after a certain date coming, coming forth in May, is that correct? The idea here is, is that um, we've, we've been down this road before and if I'm not mistaken, and Mr. Anderson can correct me, there is uh, a, a covenant in the leases that says as long as there's activity going on on the mine site, the permits will stay active and um, which is why they are still active today. We are worried that in the event that DNR does end up um, pulling the leases from Masabi Metallics, which is probably about 40 to 45% of the ore that is in, on this site, that, um, that any activity will stop and therefore the permits might be canceled. And if, and if another company wants to come in and mine there, the potential is that they might have to go through another EIS, which could take several years to get the permits when, when it's going to be exactly the same type of project. Zabi Metallics is neutral on the bill. There is, we do not need this bill to pass for us to complete the project um, and to reach the milestones that the DNR set out in the lease and passage of the bill will not impact our ability uh, to go forward with the project. Mr. Hines said that Masabi Metallics is not asking for, nor does it need this bill. And I think, and you know, I, I apologize if I'm asking questions that seem obvious to many of you. <clears throat> this is not my area. And if I'm going to vote on something or at least talk about it, I want to make sure I understand. If they don't need it, which again kind of contradicts what I've been told, then what's the purpose? This project has been in the works since 2008. Spits and starts, stops, um, whatever, uh, bankruptcies, um, uh, uh, Construction starts, construction stops, bankruptcies, change of ownership, change back of back to the same ownership, and so the the potential here is on May first, and Mr. Hines seems to think that um, that they will be able to perform according to their agreement with the DNR. That um, on on May first, if they're not able to perform, then we're back at step one, and we're back at step one without a project. Currently, this this is this mine is owned by Metallic uh, Masabi Metallics. Who is the parent company for this one? Are they the ones that originally went bankrupt, then sold it, then bought it back? Or, like, who owns this this mine? SR is the uh, majority is a shareholder, and it's the the majority shareholder of Masabi Metallics LLC. And where are they? Lo who, where are they located? SR is located in India. So oh, it's an Indian majority owned mine in Minnesota. That's that. That's interesting. I find that very curious. Um, so then my next, I do have just a few questions here. That's fine. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Um, so when these permits are passed from one entity to the other. Do they ever have to go through any kind of environmental um, environmental reviews? As there may be as many as 20 permits here, you have more than one answer to this question. But in general, if someone is proposing to manage the mine or the project um, it, it, with the same um, what we uh, results, uh, they build the same facility of the same capacity with the same type of equipment or operate it with the same type. Uh, permits can be amended and passed from owner to owner. However, if there are changes in the equipment or the process or the product, then you would need specific amendments for any and all of those permits that would be touched by that change. Permits were issued in 2008 for a project that would be a, a mine a taconite plant, a direct reduced iron plant, and a steel mill. And all of those permits are still in effect today. And what this bill does is it says that in the event that DNR transfers the leases away from Masabi Metallics, who has the leases now, 
that these permits would still be valid if another company comes in to do a similar project. My real question is, is like, why would Minnesota continue to allow um, these upstream dam designs uh, for new tailings when, when we've seen the devastation in Brazil and Ecuador and Chile, and they've actually banned those dams and, uh, you know, due to the disaster caused by the failure of these kind of tailing dams. We've been mining for 140 years and never had one of these things fail in Minnesota because they're designed differently and they're not on the side of a mountain like in Brazil. And so they're very, very safe. And uh, they've been taken care of for years and years and years. And we don't have, and in fact, and in fact, we have the only clean water in all of, of Minnesota. Both, both the DNR and the Pollution Control Agency put a lot of not only data and time, but also a lot of science goes into these permits. So um, to some degree, if we're gonna trust the science in some areas, we should trust it in most of the areas. And, our, and our, our people at our state agencies certainly can be trusted in a lot of areas. And this is one they do a good job with. Um, so what does this um, site look like? What does this campus look like? Um, like uh, how many acres uh, do you encompass for this huge project? I'm just trying to get it in my mind. Um, kind of what this all looks like. A big pit where big trucks and big shovels are in that bring rocks to a to a crusher and the crusher crushes the rocks and they send it into a, 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 a processing plant that then pelletizes the plant. And if it goes into the direct reduced iron plant, then that's another plant that has to be built. And then if the direct reduced iron plant sends it into a mini mill, that's another plant that has to be built. So you're looking at, a, at a, a quite a big footprint. And if you, you just have to come up and take a look at it to see what we're talking about. But the, the iron mine for the iron formation on the iron range is about a hundred miles long and three miles wide. And so you are on the Western end of that formation. And so you, you can imagine that it, there's, it's, it's a couple miles long. Because it's such a huge, a big complex, um, making sure we have these permits so that they can go forward um, to complete this process, I think is with that type of investment um, going forward, I, I, I don't think a company would probably, and I know you said you didn't need these, but uh, I think it makes it really clear, um, uh, this bill really makes it clear that those permits really help this company um, go forward and ensure them that, that we're serious about um, making sure they're successful. I, I realize that uh, educating my fellow members uh, of what we do up on the Iron Range so they understand that we can make uh, windmills which have 220 tons of steel in them, it, it has to start in the ground. And there's also another nine and a half tons of copper in a windmill, which that also has to start in the ground. And, um, you know, your iPhone has 61 different minerals in it and not, none of that magically falls out of the sky and shows up in Apple's factory. So um, what we do is, is, is the start of, of a lot of big things and, um, and, and they're very, very good jobs and we are very, very good stewards of the land. Well, certainly you have my commitment to continue to work with you. Obviously I'm a co-sponsor and I know Senator Bach is as well. And uh, I believe Senator Ingebrigtsen is and Senator Gazalka. So we'll, we'll do what we can to help find a pathway for this. But as, as for now, we're gonna lay it over. So thank you again for that good discussion. So with that Senate file 2112 will be laid over for possible inclusion. <laughs> To continue following these issues and more, watch legislative coverage Monday through Friday on the PBS Minnesota channel or visit our website, www.senate.mn/media.